some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. And I'm Nermeen Sheikh. Welcome to our listeners and viewers around the country and around the world. Tensions are rising in Venezuela three days after voters elected Nicolas Maduro, the chosen successor of late President Hugo Chavez, to serve out the remainder of Chavez's term. Venezuela's National Electoral Council has certified Maduro's victory after he won by about 275,000 votes. Maduro received 51 percent of the vote, while opposition leader Enrique Capriles got 49 percent. On Tuesday, President-elect Maduro accused the opposition of planning a coup against him after seven government supporters were killed and 60 people were injured in clashes after the election. Un plan orquestado que habíamos denunciado. It's an orchestrated plan that we have denounced. This is the chronology of an announced coup. I can announce here, we have defeated a coup, but they are going to continue to destabilize. Today, I declare the coup defeated. Venezuela's president-elect Maduro also accused the United States of backing efforts by the opposition to destabilize Venezuela. On Tuesday, the U.S. State Department said it will not recognize the new government unless a full vote-by-vote -vote recount is held, as demanded by Capriles. State Department spokesperson Patrick Ventreau responded to questions from the Associated Press's Matthew Lee. So you still think that they should recount the votes? I mean, that's been our position. No, no. That hasn't no, happened. After, after, after the vote has been certified, yeah, after the election has been certified, you still think that there should be a recount? Well, under the Venezuelan Constitution, it's ultimately up to uh, the CNE to certify oh, I understand the that. election that's results, the which they've position. done. Is the U.S. Um, position that there still should be a recount? Well, our position is that— For the Venezuelan people our position to have is that, confidence? Let me finish, Matt. Our position is that resolving these irregularities uh, would have engendered— uh, more confidence in the Venezuelan people in uh, the quality of this vote. And so that is uh, the concern we've expressed. Uh, but in terms of where we go forward, I just don't have anything more well, for you today. Okay. So are you prepared to congratulate Mr. Maduro on his victory? We're not there. The Venezuelan opposition says it has collected more than 3,200 reports of problems and campaign violations that could have swayed the vote. But the Union of South American Nations said Sunday's election was free and fair. Several Latin American nations have already congratulated Maduro on his victory, including Argentina, Bolivia, Brazil, Cuba and Nicaragua. Russia and China have also congratulated him. Supporters of opposition leader Enrique Capriles had planned to hold large protests today, but Capriles called them off, claiming the government wants violence on the streets. Porque el camino nuestro es democrático. Our path is a democratic one. I've taken a decision that tomorrow we are not going to mobilize ourselves, and I call upon all of my supporters to pick themselves up. Tomorrow, nobody goes out. Whoever goes out to march is on the side of violence and is doing the bidding of the government. The government wants there to be deaths in this country. The government does things itself because it is not a secret to anyone that the person who is fronting the government is not a leader. To talk more about the situation in Venezuela, we're joined by Democracy Now! video stream by Alex Main in Caracas. Alex is senior associate for international policy at the Center for Economic and Policy Research, served as an election monitor in Venezuela. Welcome to Democracy Now!, Alex Main. Talk about what has happened so far in these post-election days with the number of people killed and the U.S. position on the election. Yeah, thanks, Amy. So. Uh, yeah, as, as, as we've heard in your news summary uh, just now, it's been a rocky couple of days, uh, very noisy as well. The last couple of nights, uh, the Capriles uh, campaign has called on the population to carry out a cara, caralasso, uh, which, um, as you may know, is a banging of pots and pans that comes from uh, some of the protests that harken back to uh, the 1970s. Um, in some of the dictatorships in South America. Uh, so they've been trying to revive this uh, form of protest uh, here in uh, Venezuela, and they've been doing this really for the last 12 years. But the last time we had serious uh, casserolazos here were, was in the uh, 2002 to 2004 period, uh, where there were constant street demonstrations, there were constant rumors of a coup. There was, of course, a coup in 2002 and so on. And, and so there's been a, a real atmosphere of tension uh, here. 
And I think a lot of the country breathed a huge sigh of relief when uh, Caprilis called off the march on the CNE tomorrow. May many people uh, saw it as something very similar to the call for a march that occurred uh, back in April 2002, on April 11th, a march uh, that, of course, uh, turned violent and created a pretext uh, for a military coup. Alex Main, uh, how have people in Venezuela responded uh, to the U.S. support for the opposition's call for a recount? Well, I, I think, you know, there's no real surprise. I mean, the, the U.S. State Department has been pretty consistent in its treatment of Venezuela uh, really nearly since uh, Chavez was elected, certainly since 2001, 2002. There's, uh, I think, been kind of a constant campaign that the U.S. has uh, quite deliberately fed into to try to undermine the government, to destabilize it. Of course, they did um, openly support the coup uh, in 2002. I think one of the big differences we're seeing with 2002 now in, in um, the U.S.'s position is that they're very, very isolated. Um, it's only the U.S. Um, and the very right-wing government of Spain mm. that have backed the opposition uh, position to call for a full recount and to not uh, recognize uh, Maduro as president until that recount occurs. Um, we're not seeing that anywhere else in the world at this point. Alex, I just want to ask, <clears throat> I mean, this is this interaction between Matthew Lee of AP and uh, Mr. Ventrell of the State Department was quite astounding. It was Mr. Ventrell of the State Department who said it's ultimately up to the CNA, uh, CNE to certify election results, which they've done. And so the reporter said, so are you going to congratulate Mr. Maduro? And he said, we're not there yet. Our position is um, that it would engender more confidence in and the Venezuelan people if they would do this recount. I think back to 2000 in the United States, a very close race between um, Bush and Gore. They never had a full recount that the United States is demanding of Venezuela right now. Oh, that's absolutely correct. And, of course, it was a much uh, slimmer margin uh, back in, in 2000, and actually, of course, a margin uh, that turned out to be in favor of, of Gore in terms of the popular vote. Um, it's even more absurd um, in this country that you have really one of the most heavily audited electoral systems uh, in the world. I think this has been recognized by international observers, certainly former President Jimmy Carter the best system in the world. And the terms of uh, this electoral process were agreed to beforehand uh, by the Venezuelan opposition. Um, you have an extraordinary audit of 54 percent of the ballot boxes. Each electronic voting machine here produce, produces a paper receipt. These paper receipts go into sealed ballot boxes at the end of the voting day. Um, 54 percent of these ballot boxes are audited uh, in a random sample. This is way beyond uh, what's uh, necessary from a statistical point of view. You really only need two to three percent. But uh, this is a that was made to the opposition, but now they're calling for a, a full recount. Um, and, and so, you know, they're, they're, they're constantly trying to push things a little bit further um, in their attempt to sort of delegitimize the process here. Well, as the political turmoil in Venezuela has continued in the days after the election, Argentine President Cristina Fernandez de Kirchner on Tuesday said the country's elections had been legitimate, and she called on the U.S. to recognize the new government. Fortunately, Governor Capriles suspended a march he had prepared for tomorrow. This seems to me a sensible and patriotic act, and we thank him here from Argentina. Se lo agradecemos desde aquí de la Argentina, pero me atrevo con mucha humildad. And I dare ask, with much humility, the government of the United States to recognize the Venezuelan government after transparent and fair elections. Bolivian President Evo Morales also accused the U.S. of interfering in Venezuelan affairs after the White House said it backed an audit of Venezuela's tight election results. Um, this is an open interference from the United States towards Venezuelan democracy. We condemn, reject, and repudiate this open meddling, which looks to create unrest, leading to further interference with a coup d'etat. We won't allow that. The people will rise up. I feel sorry for their president, President Barack Obama. 
And Venezuela's chief prosecutor, Luis Ortega, outlined some of the violence seen in the country since the election. Seven Venezuelans have been killed. Among them was a police worker with the Tachira State Police. And so far, we have confirmed 61 injured people. And I ask that you hear this, that among the injured, there was one person that they burned alive. They intended to kill her by burning her. They set her ablaze. Take note of the level of violent aggression that this particular group of people have at this moment. Well, as chief prosecutor, um, Alex Main, can you talk about where the country goes from here. We also mustn't forget that it was the U.S. that uh, endorsed the coup in 2002, what was that, 11 years ago, that threw out Hugo Chavez for a few days before he made it back in, unlike other leaders like President Aristide in Haiti, who didn't make it back to the country, uh, or Zelaya in Honduras. Um, but what happens now? That just shows the significance of U.S.'s position in these countries. Well, I mean, it is absolutely critical, this uh, point about the U.S.'s position um, on uh, the internal affairs of Venezuela, because uh, what the U.S. is doing is uh, really essentially emboldening uh, the opposition. Uh, having this sort of support uh, to them uh, really means the world. Um, and I think uh, until the U.S. sort of backs off and, uh, you know, follows the rest of uh, the world, really, in recognizing uh, the results of these elections, uh, the opposition is going to continue with its current tactics. Uh, so, yes, yeah, certainly on Monday night, um, there were scenes of chaos. What was particularly ironic, given that the Caprilis campaign has said that it um, is all about defending uh, uh, Venezuela's social programs under Chavez, is that uh, there were many um, of the government health clinics that were attacked. Uh, also, many of the uh, subsidized food stores that were attacked um, by opposition supporters. And um, uh, along with those, also PSUV headquarters, um, various government officials' residences were attacked. Uh, so we're really seeing scenes reminiscent of, again, the time between 2002 and 2004. In 2004, you had what was called the Guarimba, supposedly peaceful protests. And Capriles keeps insisting that he's been calling on peaceful protests when he tells people to take to the streets. Uh, in fact, that was the case also back in 2004. And those peaceful protests grew very violent. Uh, they really paralyzed uh, most of Caracas uh, for a few days and led to a few deaths uh, as well. Um, Capriles is perfectly aware that there are violent elements within the opposition and that when he tells everyone to take to the streets to, quote, unquote, defend their votes, uh, this is the likely outcome. Uh, so, really, I, I think, you know, the U.S. is being quite irresponsible. They're promoting uh, civil conflict in the country. Fortunately, the opposition seems to be backing down at the moment. Last night was much calmer. But until the State Department has a clear position on the situation, um, we're likely to see this continue. Alex May, we want to thank you for being with us, Senior Associate for International Policy at the Center for Economic and Policy Research, served as an election monitor in Venezuela. He is speaking to us from Caracas. Thanks so much for watching this report from Democracy Now!, your daily independent global news hour. We don't accept advertising or corporate funding, but rather rely on donations from viewers like you. Please make your contribution by visiting democracynow.org. We need your support today to keep bringing you this hard-hitting, in-depth reporting.